Welcome to episode 94 of George's Random Astronomical Object. Every episode, I run a random number generator to select random astronomical coordinates in the sky, and I then search for an astronomical object near those coordinates and talk about what makes that object so interesting to astronomers. So let's now run the random number generator. And the coordinates for this episode are 22 hours, 14 minutes, 11.9 seconds right ascension, and negative 49 degrees, 19 minutes, 27 seconds declination. This episode's coordinates point to a location in the constellation Grus, which is a constellation in the southern part of the sky that was created in the 1500s by the Dutch navigators Peter Dirk Zoon Kaiser and Frederick de Hoytman. The constellation is named after a crane, as in the bird and not the mechanical object, although it looks more like the mechanical object than the bird. Unlike many of the southern constellations that I have derided on this podcast, this constellation actually has relatively bright stars in it, and it actually vaguely looks like something, so it's much better than something like the constellation's Antlia, Picter, or Microscopium. In any case, the specific object that this episode's coordinates point to is WD2211-495, a white dwarf located 19.8 light years or 58.8 parsecs from Earth. Interestingly, this star was discovered in the early 1990s by an X ray telescope named ROSAT, which is often pronounced ROSAT, that was also equipped with an ultraviolet camera. The star managed to elude astronomers until that point in time because it is relatively faint in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. However, WD2211-495 has a surface temperature of 62,000 Kelvin, and as a consequence of this, it is quite bright at ultraviolet wavelengths. So, when Rosat began making maps of the entire sky at X-ray and ultraviolet wavelengths in the 1990s, WD2211-495 stood out very prominently. As an additional note, this star's temperature is not only hot compared to Earth's standards, but also compared to most other stars, although it isn't that unusual compared to other white dwarfs. As a brief review, a white dwarf like WD2211-495 is the dead core left over from when a star about the size of the sun reached the end of its life. A sun-like star will start out its life using hydrogen and helium in its core, but once its core fills up with helium, it will expand into a red giant, with the fusion of hydrogen into helium continuing around the inert helium core until the star reaches the point where the fusion of helium into carbon and oxygen is triggered. Then several other things happen, and in a while, the star's core fills up with carbon and oxygen, but a sun-sized star doesn't have the mass to trigger the fusion of those elements, so the carbon and oxygen just sits there and does nothing. Eventually, the outer gas layers of the star get blown away, leaving the inert core, which becomes the white dwarf. That white dwarf might retain thin layers of hydrogen and helium after that, or it could be just carbon and or oxygen. Occasionally, though, white dwarfs are found with outer atmospheres that contain other heavy elements, and WD2211-495 is one of those stars. Among other things, the outer atmosphere of WD2211-495 contains silicon, aluminum, iron, and nickel. Even though the star would not have been able to create these elements in its core before it became a white dwarf, it might have formed from an interstellar gas cloud that contained these things. However, the general expectation is that the heavier elements in white dwarfs should sink into their centers, with the lighter elements lying on top. We should never see the heavier elements if they've all sunk into the star's core. 
This led to the question of where did the heavy elements in the outer atmosphere of WD 2211-495 come from? One possibility was that because WD 2211-495 is hot, the heavy elements within the star's core were able to absorb a lot of extra radiation from within the star, which caused these atoms to get hot and levitate to the star's surface. The other possibility is that something like a gravitationally disrupted planet, or some asteroids, or something else with lots of heavy elements, is falling onto the surface of the White Dwarf. It was not immediately clear which of these scenarios applied to WD 2211-495. However, an analysis of data from the Hubble Space Telescope, published by a collaboration led by Simon Preval, found that the amount of heavy elements in the outer atmosphere of WD 2211-495, as well as a couple of similar hot white dwarfs, was simply too high to be explained by the levitation of elements from the centers of these stars. It therefore looks more likely that stuff has been falling onto the surface of WD 2211-495 and the other hot white dwarfs over time, which implies that these objects may have some sort of planetary systems. WD 2211-495 continues to attract a lot of attention because it's an unusual hot white dwarf, and because it has so many heavy elements in its outer atmosphere. You can expect to hear more about WD 2211-495 in the future. The location on the Earth's surface corresponding to the position of WD 2211-495 in the night sky is about 870 kilometers northeast of the island of South Georgia in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a cold part of the Atlantic Ocean where you can expect to find lots of penguins. It's absolutely nothing like WD 2211-495, so I'm not even going to try to come up with some sort of description of what this location on Earth and the astronomical object have in common. The website for this podcast is www.randomastronomicalobject.com. You can visit the website to download episodes of the show, read information about the astronomical objects, view images of those astronomical objects, look up additional reference information, and send me random feedback. The audio was recorded and edited by George Bendo. The music is Immersion by Sasha Endy at www.sasha-endy.de and the sound effects are from the Freesound Project at www.freesound.org. Thanks for listening. 